So you're looking for fun, free things to do in the Orlando area? Today I'll talk you through a few of my favorites. Let's get to it. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Dave K here today with 10 plus fun free things to do in Orlando. I've got about 14 free activities as well as a couple of pretty affordable paid activities to add to your list in the Orlando area. If you're looking for Orlando attractions besides the theme parks, today I'm going to give you a more updated and complete list of my favorite things to do in the area. You may have seen a while back I made a list of fun free things to do in Orlando, but today I've updated the list. Having lived in Florida for about two years now, having dealt with the current health climate for about a year, there are some updates regarding the health climate on a few of these activities. I'm going to talk you through a few different categories, give you a nice visualization of what some of these activities are like with pictures and videos, and talk you through what I've seen and what I'm looking forward to trying in the future. Let's get to it. Let me talk you through how I'm organizing today's list of top free things to do in Orlando. First, we have the shopping and dining centers, about seven shops and dining venues, not specific shops and dining venues, but shopping centers that allow you to look at a variety of restaurants, a variety of shopping, and to enjoy all that those town centers have to offer. Then we'll take a look at a few lakes and parks for some natural outdoor activities, look into some of the free museums in the Orlando area, and a couple of other paid items, which are pretty reasonably priced considering all the fun you get from these activities. Want to share those with you as well. Starting it off with one of my favorites, this item has been on the top of my list for a while now, and it remains on the top of the list, and that would be the Celebration Town Center. The Celebration Town Center is in Celebration, Florida. It was a city developed by Disney and has a variety of activities for you to enjoy. It's primarily an area to check out for shopping and dining, but it also has some natural parks and waterfronts for you to enjoy. I've visited the Celebration Town Center many times and most definitely will be going back for food and fun, relaxing vibes. It's a great place to perhaps film some other non-food related videos. You may have seen The Gem in recent days also filmed in that Celebration area. In looking at their website, Celebration Town Center has a variety of delicious dining options as well as other shopping centers for you to visit. Looking specifically at dining here, we have a variety of restaurants that we've visited that we enjoy. I would recommend this Kilwin's Ice Cream Shop. It has some delicious ice cream. Pretty much every item we've tried from there is fantastic. Everything's a winner, but we do have a few favorites that you may have seen in those previous vlogs. Some of those fruity ice cream flavors were quite good. We also enjoyed Ari Sushi, not our favorite sushi spot. We love Sushi Katana, but Ari Sushi was quite affordable and not bad in Celebration. Another one to enjoy here in Celebration is that Celebration Town Tavern. Delicious food there as well if you're looking for that New England style. We had a variety of delicious options there. Last time we visited, I was first returning back to Florida and tried some of their food. I thought it was really good overall. Most definitely a fun atmosphere to be able to be out and relax in a beautiful nature-filled shopping and dining outdoor mall. And there are a variety of events we've seen pop up in the past in Celebration as well. Many of those include street vendors selling their wares under kiosks. So we've seen these little tents set up with former cast members selling merchandise or small shops selling merchandise in kiosks. It's nice to see their holiday decorations in celebration as well. Overall, really cool environment. Next on my list is the Winter Garden Village. We've been to the Winter Garden Village a couple of times as well. We've looked at some of the stores there when we're shopping for sneakers, for example, and plenty of dining venues. They have a few of our favorites. If you're looking for a smoothie in that area, you'll find Planet Smoothie, as well as other delicious venues. In looking at their website, you'll see they have an events tab as well, but you can view the directory on their website and see a variety of apparel and accessory shops, as well as some other dining venues. So you can scroll down and see all the options they have. They've got their department stores, pretty much every type of establishment you might be looking for, you should be able to find. But if you're looking for a few of my favorites, First Watch is delicious. I've only been once so far, but I look forward to visiting again. They have Panda Express, which is a nice quick Chinese food spot, and Pei Wei, which I absolutely love for some quick service Chinese food, as well as Planet Smoothie. Planet Smoothie is also in that area. If you are a smoothie fan, as I am, I would definitely recommend checking out Planet Smoothie. I like the peanut butter shake, both at Smoothie King and Planet Smoothie. I think it's called the peanut butter power-up. 
And there's a variety of other stores for you to take a look at in that Winter Garden Village if you find yourself in that area. Really beautiful outdoor shopping center there as well with all kinds of shops that you can find depending upon what your needs are. Next up, we have Old Town Kissimmee. There's quite a bit to Kissimmee and to the central Orlando area if you're looking for attractions besides those standard theme parks. And you might consider all of the shopping, dining, different malls and storefronts in the area, but Old Town Kissimmee has a beautiful night vibe to it. If you look at the lights, as the town lights up, you've got some beautiful attractions that really shine throughout the night, as well as plenty of shopping and dining to enjoy. I've found a blog post here with some information as a guide to Old Town Kissimmee. You can see there are a variety of activities for you to enjoy here as well. I love that color scheme, the aesthetic of the Old Town Kissimmee area with that Ferris wheel and with that launching attraction. Haven't tried that one. Not sure I will try that one, but it's nice to see in the night sky. Not to mention, you have a variety of other attractions to enjoy. You have Family Fun Center. It seems there's even family movie nights and paint nights and other activities to look into as well, as well as that classic car cruise. You may have seen me touch on in that previous video. This area includes a lot of those activities, kind of consolidated those into this one general shopping area. So it's worth taking a look at Old Town Kissimmee if you're interested. Next up is the ever popular Disney Springs. And I will include on this one, Universal City Walk in addition, if you're looking for some not theme park specific, but extremely close to the theme parks and themed after the theme parks, shopping and dining centers. I do love both Disney Springs and Universal City Walk, but taking a closer look at Disney Springs today, I do feel there's more in Disney Springs than there is in City Walk, and many restaurants we enjoy and can recommend in Disney Springs as well. There's a beautiful lake in the middle of Disney Springs near that Lego store. You can see there's a Lego dragon in the water and beautiful Lego decorations all around that building, a stage that sits on top of the water right by one of the Starbucks at Disney Springs. There's two separate Starbucks there and beautiful activities like the Christmas tree trail you may have seen us do all in Disney Springs, all free and not part of theme park admission. You don't have to go into a park nor do you have to pay to enter a theme park. Simply visit this shopping center and you'll be on your way. In looking at Disney Springs website, you can see a variety of activities to sort and filter through here as well. You can click on your shopping or dining or otherwise. In looking at dining, we can see there are a variety of venues here as well. You can sort these, for example, by quick service or table service and see some of the recommendations there. Load more or look at the limited recommendations that they have. We did love Deluxe Burger. I want to go back and try to see if we can find something that we might love even more from there. The BB Wolf Sausage is fantastic. Not listed here as its table service. I love Planet Hollywood, another fantastic place to visit. You have delicious Everglades and Gideon's Bakehouse if you're looking for some sugary items. Earl of Sandwich, always fantastic, and so much more to enjoy. Next up, we have the Orlando Vineland Premium Outlets, and you could also consider the Orlando International Premium Outlets here, depending upon what you're looking for. Two massive shopping centers if you're looking for a combination of indoor and outdoor shopping and dining. This one has a much more traditional shopping mall feel at least in my opinion. If you've been to any of the other Simon Property Group shopping centers, like the Tampa Premium Outlets, this one is very similar in a way that it has many of the storefronts outdoors that you can access, but it's all within this specific few blocks with no roads in between these shops. Now, some other Simon Property Group malls may have roads between some of the shops, and there are more shops in these outlets further down the way, but you can access many of the shops without stepping in the road. You'll also find a food court area for you to step in and look through a variety of dining venues there. Looking at the website here is a little trickier. You wanna make sure that you're navigating specifically to the outlet that you're looking for, whether it's Vineland or those international outlets. I'm looking at Vineland here and you can see a variety of shops too. It's not sorted and filtered quite as easily as some of those other sites, but you can see many of those popular shops we love to visit, specifically that Disney outlet. That is one of those reasons we continue to visit that shopping venue if you're looking for some Disney merchandise. But you can also find a variety of other delicious and fun-filled shopping activities here too. I love to visit the ASIC store if you're looking for shoes, plenty of shoe stores there to consider, and so much more. 
Heading over towards the east side of Orlando, we have the Lake Nona Town Center. Lake Nona is absolutely beautiful. I love the sight line from Lake Nona with all of the new constructions. You have the hospital and a variety of stores, this beautiful looking rainbow style garage with rainbow staircase going up the side of the building. A beautiful place to visit and to experience. And they have their own town center as well as a nice park for you to be able to check out and enjoy. First diving into that town center and taking a look at their website, you can see a variety of options here too. Again, it may not be the most clear website in terms of activities to enjoy, but you can scroll through and get a feel for some of what Lake Nona has to offer in that town center. And we'll take a look here specifically in the next point at Boxy Park at Lake Nona. But before we dive too far into Boxy Park, I'm leaving that one for the parks and lakes category. So let's instead dive into one of my last recommendations in terms of shopping centers to make sure that you check out. That last suggestion would be Waterford Lakes, another beautiful area here in Orlando, Florida, in Central Florida. Similarly, plenty of stores to look through and look around. A lot of outdoor space on this one too. Now, you may find more driving might be involved for you to get from store to store on this one. Every part of town has their own advantage and disadvantage. This one, you've got a bit spread out shops, but you have so many different shops to check out. There is one larger area for you to look at a variety of shops and some nearby neighboring shops. So plenty of stores to look through. In looking at the Waterford Lakes Town Center website, you can see they have a variety of dining venues, stores to look through, all kinds of fun-filled activities, as well as their own events tab, movie theaters, and more. Scrolling through some of these food items, I might recommend a delicious venue, which I haven't seen anywhere else in case you are considering trying somewhere brand new for you, and that would be Slapfish. Slapfish was delicious when I tried it in Waterford Lakes. Unfortunately, didn't get the chance to vlog that one when I went, but it was fantastic. It was fried fish stylings of food, perhaps a shrimp po'boy or other delicious fish themed options. Most definitely delicious and I would love to go back to try Slapfish and other shops here in Waterford Lakes again in the future. Now let's get back to Boxy Park. It's worth noting that Boxy Park does have quite a bit of food and drink for you to enjoy as well. But being called a park and looking at some of the beautiful decorations in Boxy Park, I'm gonna qualify this one as more of a sightseeing as opposed to a shopping and dining. Sometimes it's hard to draw that line, so you can take a look yourself and see how you would qualify it. But it really does look like a fun-filled center to enjoy. Looking at their website, you can see quite a bit of Boxy Eats. They have their own dining venues. Many of these restaurants I've never heard of. I haven't tried any of these names in food before. I must admit, I haven't actually made my way to visit this complex, unfortunately, but I look forward to visiting it when the time comes. You can also schedule this area, it seems like, for your own personal events. Really cool, you can get a get together and make that happen in Boxy Park. Overall, looks like a cool place to visit. The next couple of parks and lakes I'm gonna talk you through. We have not so much in terms of website on these, but we do have a few pictures for you to check out. First one to talk you through is the Lakefront Park in Kissimmee. Looks like a beautiful place to go out and enjoy some nature on the water, of course. Lakefront being a big piece of the name here in Kissimmee. It seems like the Lakefront Park might have a boat dock for you to be able to get out to. I'm not sure if this is for people to dock their own boats, or perhaps you might be able to find an excursion where you can rent a boat or jump on someone's boat tour. And we'll talk a little bit more about boat tours in a bit, but beautiful sightseeing area if you're looking for waterfront activities. Then we have the Waterfront Park in Claremont, also known as Lake Mineola, another beautiful looking waterfront where the lake meets the land for you to be able to walk along the water and enjoy a relaxing stroll on a sunny day, or perhaps enjoy an evening time sundown stroll by the water. I've heard of Lake Mineola many a time, but I haven't had the opportunity to visit this one yet either. I think I'll have to put this one higher on my priority list in terms of making sure we get out there and check that one out for myself. Now on to the museums in the Central Florida area. There's a lot of museums that actually offer free tours. You can visit the museums completely free, many of which are supported by donations. Let's take a look at a few of these. 
Firstly, we'll take a look at the Morse Museum. The Morse Museum features American art. They have a variety of beautiful looking American artwork from paintings to beautiful sculptures with artwork all across them. I get the feeling that perhaps this is a early 1900s museum exhibit, but it seems like the collections range from 1850 to 1990. You've got glass, metalwork, textiles, costumes. There's a lot to take a look at here at the Morse Museum. Currently, the public hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Currently, temporarily closed on Sundays. Make sure you take a look at that Plan Your Visit tab on the Morse Museum website. Now, this is generally a paid museum. $6 for adults, looks like $5 for seniors, and $1 for students with valid ID. But there are free appointments on their website as well. So if you're looking to specifically plan a free visit, make sure you take a look at the Plan Your Visit tab there as well. Next up on our list, I have the Winter Park History Museum. This one looks like it's referred to as the History Museum, but the building itself reads Historical Museum, Winter Park Historical Museum. So if you're having trouble finding it, maybe switch between history or historical as the name before museum. The website on this one, not as much built out, but current hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you can take a look into visiting as well. There is free admission at that one, so you can go anytime it seems like and not have to worry about the cost of admission. Next up is the Craft Azalea Garden in the city of Winter Park. Looking at their website, you can see it's built into the cityofwinterpark.org, the information on Craft Azalea. You're looking at 5.2 acres of public garden. Really cool to read about all that. A variety of beautiful nature. It seems like a popular spot for weddings. Seems like a lot of people are taking wedding pictures at the Craft Azalea Garden. So you might consider some photo opportunities here in addition to some of the other locations. It's a beautiful piece of nature. I'd love to take the time to check out and share some photos of as well at some point. So we'll have to put this one on our list. One more museum to touch on. We're looking at the Cornell Fine Arts Museum. As you can envision, this one's got fine art. Yeah, they've, they've got fine art. If you look at their website, you can see their admission hours and timed tickets. Admission is free on this one, and they're currently closed on Mondays, open from 10 to 7 on Tuesdays, 10 to 4 Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and Saturday and Sunday are noon to 5. But it's worth taking a look on the website for information given the current climate. You never know when the hours might change. Now I wanna take a look with you at a couple more activities. These ones aren't free, but they are moderately reasonably priced and they look like really cool activities. The first one I wanna to touch on is the wall crawl. The wall crawl is a photo worthy studio. It seems like really cool backgrounds throughout the exhibit. If you take a look at their website, beautifully decorated, looks like you can get this fantastic lighting for taking some Instagram worthy photos perhaps. Maybe you'll go there if you want to get some beautiful photos for yourself or for the family to be able to share with family and friends, put on postcards or post on Instagram or otherwise. Looks like admission is $25 for adults and you can add in a professional digital photo package at a discount if you want to do that. They have an FAQs page where they're giving you more information on the restrictions and changes for the current health climate. So that's nice to see as well in case you're considering going in 2021. Another awesome looking activity in the area, not free, but sounds like a lot of fun, is the Winter Park Boat Tours. You can take scenic boat tours in Winter Park. Looks like a beautiful place to visit, looking at their website. This is one, I'm sure, of many different companies that might offer boat tours in that area. But I stumbled across this one in my searching and found it's only $14 for adults to have that boat tour. It's an 18 passenger pontoon boat ride and they're open daily, it looks like, from 10 to 4. Take a look at their website if you want to find more information and are considering taking a boat tour in Winter Park. So these are a few of my thoughts in terms of my favorite fun free activities or discounted less expensive activities to do in Orlando if you're looking for something to do besides the theme parks. And we're talking here in 2021 given the current health climate. These are a few things you might consider if you're in the area and looking for a break from those theme parks. 
What do you think? And what are some of your favorite activities in Central Florida outside of those theme parks? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Looking forward to sharing so much more fun-filled adventures with you. Wanted to make an update on this older video because I put together a fun free list of things to do in Orlando, but I think it had some opportunity. I didn't put in so many videos, so much website visualizations, or those photos. So I wanted to put some of those together and share this updated list with you now that I've been more around the area. Thanks so much for helping me make today an amazing day. Don't forget to make your day an amazing day as well. Make sure you focus on those positive vibes and make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed of more positive, fun-filled adventures heading your way. Until next time, play on. So yuk, <laughs> so yuking. <laughs>